Hi, I'm Ryder Carroll, creator of the Bullet Journal Method, and today is World Mental Health Day. I think this day is incredibly important because it brings awareness to one of the most critical, universal, and highly stigmatized parts of the human existence. The way that we normalize and destigmatize the topic of mental health is through awareness. The awareness that our bodies and our minds are inextricably linked to one another. The awareness that each and every one of us will face mental health challenges at some point or another in our life. The awareness that experiencing overwhelming thoughts and emotions is completely natural and nothing to be ashamed of. And the awareness that there are things that we can do every day to maintain our mental health. For me, one of the most powerful ways of maintaining my mental health is, surprise, surprise, through journaling. Journaling allows me to take what's going on in my mind and put it on paper to externalize it, to explore and to process. The way that I do this in bullet journaling is that throughout the day, I will write down how I feel. I do this using the notes bullet. In addition, what I often do is when I complete a task or if I've just concluded an event, I'll also write down how I feel. This way I can start to correlate my experiences with my emotions and my thoughts. And this is a really powerful way to start cultivating self-awareness. To dive even deeper, I can now take these short form notes and then expand upon them later through long form journaling. My bulleted notes become journaling prompts so I can process and explore different experiences and thoughts later when I have the time. This is what I call a written reflection. I find written reflections to be an incredibly powerful way to help me untangle really difficult thoughts, emotions, or experiences. Seeing as how today is World Mental Health Day, I figured that I would share a guided written reflection in hopes that it may help you connect with yourself a little bit deeper today. Before I go, I did want to stress one thing. When a friend of ours breaks their arm or contracts some disease, some condition that they can't resolve on their own, we insist that they find the help they need. This, however, is not the case when we're experiencing painful thoughts and emotions. Often we're met with, get over it, don't be so sensitive, be a man. To me, saying something like, get over it, is equivalent to saying, make your arm not broken. It just simply doesn't work that way. We need to see our minds for what they are, part of our body, a critical part, not some kind of spooky, disembodied, second-class citizen. Health? is health is health. And sometimes our health can be so compromised that the only way back is to ask for help. So I'll end with this. You are not weak. You are not broken. And most importantly, you are not alone. There are many resources out there that can help you or your loved ones that are struggling get better. My team and I have started assembling a list of resources for those struggling with mental health that we aim to improve over time. We've included a link in the description below. I'll close with a quote that's been particularly helpful to me when I'm in the thick of it. This quote comes from author Anais Nin. We don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. With that in mind, I offer this written reflection to help us check in with how we are. Welcome to today's written reflection. All you'll need is pen, paper, and a little time. Make yourself comfortable as I frame today's question. If you'd like to listen with your eyes closed, please do so. If you'd like to draw while you listen, feel free to do so. If you'd like to take notes, go right ahead. If what I talk about triggers a strong thought or feeling, pause and explore that. This is your time. Let's begin. I want to start by telling you about a friend of mine. The first thing she does every morning is take her temperature. 
Originally, she did this to track her cycle, but over time, it became a ritual to help her check in with herself. It created a baseline self-awareness that helped her better navigate her day. Cultivating self-awareness is important because how we feel impacts the way we act, and how we act, in turn, influences the way we end up feeling. It's a cycle of being that often cruises on autopilot, even when it's headed in the wrong direction. Operating on autopilot leaves us reacting to life. We say and do the first thing that comes to our mind automatically. The first thing that's triggered when we're challenged is our lizard brain. When operating with that brain, our options are limited to fight or flight. That may have served our ancient ancestors well when the options were to have dinner or to be dinner, but it doesn't serve us well in our modern daily lives because neither running away nor attacking someone really solves anything. It tends to leave you worse off. When you say and do things automatically, you end up wishing that you hadn't. In other words, automatic reactions tend to be careless, driven from a place of fear. Careless actions are often short-sighted, selfish, and even harmful. This is especially true if you're in a bad place emotionally. The best way to ignore our feelings is to distract ourselves. In other words, to switch off our mind and go on autopilot. Checking in with yourself can switch your autopilot off. When you switch off your autopilot, you're able to stop reacting. You access the modern part of your brain, your prefrontal cortex, which grants you significantly more options in a given situation than fight or flight. It allows you to stop, to process, and you can make more intentional choices. Intentional choices are much more resourceful. For example, if you know that you're running hot, you choose not to have a delicate conversation. You choose to have it a little later when you're in a better place, which in turn results in you communicating more effectively. See, simply by taking your temperature, by being aware of how you are, you can avoid saying something hurtful and demonstrate respect and care. This is the difference between reacting and responding. Knowing how you are is especially important these days. Maybe you're stuck distracting yourself with ever more screen time glued to a toxic news cycle. Maybe you're with a fragile or nervous partner who you've been trying to stay strong for by swallowing your own experiences. Or maybe you're with your family that just demands all of your time. Whatever your case may be, it's time to turn our gaze inward just for a little while. Which brings us to today's question. How are you? Today's question is, how are you? This is what we'll write about today. If you have what you need, feel free to end the recording here. Otherwise, I will provide some guidance as to how you can tackle this question. First, you want to turn to a blank spread and use the question as your topic. You may understandably be feeling many things these days, and if you don't know where to start, start by listing out the things that you've been feeling. You can do this by rapid logging your feelings as notes, so that means with the note dash. Notes can be words like anxious, numb, joyful, guilty. They can also be short sentences like, I don't feel bad, but that's making me feel guilty, or I want to throw my whole family out the window. There are no wrong answers here. Don't judge, don't overthink it, simply capture what comes up. Declutter your mind, feel free to vent. Pause this recording now, take a few minutes, and press play when you're ready. Now you should have a list of your feelings written down. Find one thought or feeling that you want to explore. Again, don't judge yourself here. Just capture what comes up. It doesn't have to be smart or profound, and this is for your eyes only. We often ignore or suppress feelings to protect ourselves or others. For this small stretch of time, allow yourself to simply feel as tired, as petty, or as exhausted as you want. Get it out. You're here to simply acknowledge the feeling. Try to view it not with judgment, but with curiosity. Labeling that feeling by writing about it helps us process it and let it go. Feel free to pause this recording to explore this for a few minutes and then press play when you're ready. If you're not making any progress with the feeling that you picked, simply pick another one. If something came up as you were thinking about a feeling or as I'm talking, Focus on that. You're not necessarily looking for answers here. 
You're simply exploring the space to see what comes up. Sometimes when you write about one thing, something else more urgent can reveal itself. Feel free to write about that. Let me wrap up by sharing a couple tips. When you're done with this list, you can always come back to this session and run this exercise again to check in with yourself. I recommend that you do this fairly regularly. If you don't already, I encourage you to also try logging your feelings throughout your day in your daily logs. You can write them down directly or you can nest them under events. That will help you link your experiences with your feelings. It's a good way to stay mindful of where your heart is at in relationship to the things you're doing. Thank you for taking the time. I hope that it was useful and that you'll join me again. Happy bullet journaling.